How do you do? Do you know that I post every uh, Thursday and every Sunday? This is my post. And I'm very, very happy on this Sunday to tell you my opinion of this uh, hottest new political situation that's taking place right now. And you know the main subject of conversation, anybody who's discussing politics right now is one man, Barack Obama. And everybody is talking about Barack Obama, what a breath of fresh air he is, how different he is, how unique he is, what a great new solidifier of opinion he'll be, and what a unifier of America he'll become, and what a refreshing voice, what a phenomenal character, what a... What a wonderful, unbelievable, this year, charisma, quality, a character they never saw before. The fact is, they invented it in their own minds. He's just another person with nothing to say and nothing to do. He's a mindless man, and he proved it a hundred times because every time he talks, it's about nothing, and whatever he says is weightless. It's weightless, meaningless phraseology that's repetitive boredom. If somebody else said it, you would say, when is he going to say something worthwhile? When is he going to make a contribution worth listening to? When is he going to create an idea? If you're running for president, you have a point, a purpose, a mission. There's something wrong that you want to straighten out. There's something new that you want to create. There's some way that you want to fix things that are broken, that are going to be a whole new way of doing things that we've never done before, that's going to accomplish something that people will enjoy or, or have or get or somehow benefit them in a way that never did before. What is that? Could you name one thing that he ever said that means anything to anybody that will serve any purpose on this site except give him another job that he ever thought he would get? He's a celebrity manufactured by people who are too stupid to realize that the man is saying nothing, talking about nothing. All he does is show up. The only thing they know is that he's not menacing, he's humble, he's straightforward, he's classy, and he's refined. Imagine, would you pick a doctor that way? Imagine if two people came, God forbid you had a heart condition, you had to pick out somebody to cure you. Would you look for a guy that you know is tall and handsome, or has a perfect haircut? Or would you look for a guy who knows something about medicine or about a heart that maybe could help you? Would you judge his weight or his color, or would you be enamored by, by his quality of appearance, his style, his look, and the fact that he has a few fancy phrases about a heart, or would you want to make sure a guy has a track record of fixing hearts, of doing something with a heart that serves a purpose and saves somebody's life because he didn't know what, because nobody else was there that could do it as well as he could? Isn't that what you want? You want a guy who could do a job. Are you trying to say the presidency of the United States requires no intelligence, requires no knowledge, no special preparation, no special no special awareness of all the problems of the infinite complications of this whole universe, which is more complicated now than ever before, and we are threatened more than ever before, and our lives are more in danger than ever before. Do you want a guy who could talks about nothing, says nothing, accomplish nothing, and does nothing? Is that the guy who should be president just because he's black? Now you're going to say, to you, what do you mean because he's black? That is the only reason why he's such a hot commodity. If he was short and Jewish, or if he was a small Puerto Rican, or if he was a fat Indian, Nobody would care, nobody would notice him. But everybody feels guilty about the blacks never getting a chance at the presidency of the United States, and everybody wants to get over their guilt complex about, about having persecuted the blacks before, and blacks were persecuted before, and they have suffered before, but everybody's so desperate to compensate for the sins of the past that they have to do something for them, and they something now became the presidency of the United States. They already became mayors, and, and they already became governors and senators, now the next step is the presidency. And since they were never present before, they have to find someone out. And since they were afraid of people like Sharpton because he got a big mouth and starts marching and starts threatening and tried to, and, uh, and either will have people like burning or killing or plundering or murdering, you were, they were afraid of Al Sharpton. Jesse Jackson sounds like he's about to start a fight with somebody someplace you don't know why or where or how, and you were afraid of him too. Now you found a guy who says, wait a second, I'll look how nice I am, look how tall I am, look how soft I speak. Look, look at what a lovely haircut I got. I'm perfect. Where are you going to find a black person like me? Don't you think I should be president? No, you shouldn't be president. If you're a soft-spoken, nice, lovely person, God bless you. Take a test for something you could do. Maybe you, did, maybe you should be a head waiter in a restaurant, since you never said an intelligent thing in your life. Maybe you should be a doorman, since you contributed nothing to, to the significance of the issues in this country. Maybe you should get a job where you can't hurt anybody. That's what you should do. Don't try to take a job that you know nothing about and try to destroy America while you just because you deserve a job. You deserve a job, but you deserve a job because not because you're black. You deserve a job because you're capable of doing it. And this is not your field. You're not prepared for it. You don't know nothing about it. So don't bother Jewish people. Don't bother the American people. Don't bother the black people. The black people also deserve a good president, and it's not you.